Citizens, I join you today for my secret launch base with grave, grave news. One I have looked after since his very birth, provided food, education, warmth, and comfort to... He? He has betrayed me! For some time now, my secret unicorn forces have been keeping an eye on this Kerbal's activities. But now, with his dissemination of his lies over the media network, we have to take action, and I have authorized his execution. This will be broadcast live over the media networks, and every citizen is mandated to watch it. But first, reasons for celebration. My science advisor will now take over the media networks and talk you all through the deployments. Hey guys, welcome back to Twitch and Plays Global Collaborative Warfare, where we join the Spartrons on top of the VAB to watch the monumental launch of our latest and greatest satellite. It is time that we got a telecommunications satellite up there, as it has come to the attention of our glorious leader that some of the powerful people out there, the people in command of all the armies, lack this one defining trait of a true leader of the peoples, telepathic communication. Like every other citizen in the Kerbal's Democratic Republic of North Cthulhu, I was astounded that there are Kerbals out there that will allow themselves to be led by such inferior beings. Beings that lack the willpower, determination and discipline to take control of their own minds and bodies and perform the miracles required to show their peoples that they are worthy of the mantle of leadership. I do apologise, as Chief Science Officer, it's not normally down to me to get involved in such political shenanigans, but I have to say I was absolutely astounded at this news. I, I just couldn't believe it. Anyway, Glorious Leader has done me the honour of visiting me in my dreams and telling me that we need to assign this satellite a proper orbit in space. He visited me in the form of the dragon and showed me the huge tracts of land that were Northern Clothu. I then felt a tension on my ankle and looked down to see a chain, a chain of electromagnetic radiation tying me and the land together. I then looked at my arms and saw myself as a solar cell attached to the side of this giant echo chamber, bound by gravitational forces to the very land of my birth. As the Kerbal's Democratic Republic of North Clothu's premier scientist, I knew how to interpret the meaning in this dream. I knew that we had to put a telecommunications satellite up there in a geosynchronous orbit with North Clothu so that we may use the glories of our scientific knowledge and know-how. This was mainly an issue of timing. I had to put my Apple Apsis up at around 2,800 kilometers. I think it was about there, 2,600, something like that. Uh, and then just wait for that Apple Apsis to meet up with North Clothu. And then when all the omens were correct, Twitch Yogi came to me and gave me the power to make this satellite into a perfectly circular orbit. Once there, all we had to do was deploy our communications dish up the front there. And you will see we have four missiles strapped to this thing. Now, I'm not expecting any serious troubles with my communication satellite, mainly because this is the only way for the other leaders to get hold of me, and if we started taking out other people's communication satellites, well, then we would never be able to send threats to each other, and that wouldn't be much fun, would it? But anyway, so there we go. One glorious thing done for the glories of the glories, uh, and we will go see what else we're going to do. In fact, I said we were going to go look at some space game junkies' bases, so let's do that. Back at Black Crags, we have been preparing the winged mongoose to go off on a little bit of a recon mission, as it appears to be what this plane is primarily for. It doesn't really have the maneuverability to be going like in there and going face to face against all these missiles and stuff, because, as I say, it just doesn't have the turning circle. Though it is really good as some sort of like long-range reconnaissance. Now, where I want to go is fly... Let's move to a map view here. Fly northward through my territory up to Cola Crater, uh, mainly because I think this would be a good waypoint for us to be, like, taking a, drop, a step off towards tape bases, you know, just in case war ever happens. Unfortunately, on my way up, Tamty Kerman, our intrepid pilot, but radios back towards our mission operators and tells us we are actually running desperately low of fuel. It is about here that we are halfway through our fuel allowance, and this coastline here is still inside my lands. It is not until we go past this water that we get to Space Game Junkies, so we're going to have to call this one off on grounds of no fuel, which is a little bit vexing, but it is the way it has to be sometimes. We're going to bring it back, get it refueled, possibly use it in another deployment scenario. Also, I'm not sure what happened with the City Lights thing. I thought I turned it off, but it's still there. 
I will sort that out in between this flight and the next. But yeah, here we go. Turning around and heading for home. Of course, after the long flight back, Tamsi really does show what training has gone into all our pilots here at the Kerbal's Democratic Republic of Northern Clefou. Puts down ever so gently and grinds to a very gentle stop on our beautiful runway here at Black Crags. Citizens, the time for justice is upon us. The treacherous dog is sat down upon our execution chamber and we will deal with him in the manner fit of the dog he is. Milford Cameron, any words in your defense? Twichong Yi, it is you who- Oh! It is you who have betrayed your people! Long live the re- <laughs> Thus is the fate of all traitors. Though it saddens me, now we must deal with the root cause of all this treachery. My unicorns tell me he was led astray by the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente, and this shall not stand. You heard our glorious leader, we're going to war, and of course the first thing we need is information. Information on his insidious base. From this distance out it's hard to see what's going on, but this gun turret we have seen before in a flyby, and this VTOL we have seen before with a flyby, but all the way over here we have this thing that's a little bit hard to make out from this distance, but if we zoom in quite a bit we will see that this is actually really laden with weapons, and this is going to be the thing that I want to deal with immediately. Back at Black Crags our engineers have been super busy working on this, the Dragonfly. Now I was quite restricted in what I could make here because obviously I've released um, one air vehicle already, obviously being my satellite, but this here, this is a ground based vehicle despite the fact that it hovers, uh, I cannot go actually any higher than this. Uh, we've got a few missiles on the side and a chain gun on front so we should be um, super effective against everything that is at, at tape space. We could have gone straight towards tape space but I decided the uh, safest way to deal with this was to actually come out and along the uh, ocean here. Here on Tape's coastline, Eldos and Anmund are waiting for the orders to begin the invasion because of course the moment we touch these, this land we are in fact invading Tape's territory. And here we go, the uh, order has been given, Eldos and Anmund, possible suicide mission but the point has to be made. Foreign powers will not be allowed to influence our people and make them spread these filthy propagandous lies against our glorious leader. The ascent up this hill was a little bit more difficult than expected for this experimental vehicle, but then, you know, that is an experimental vehicle for you. Uh, what I used on the back was the oblong jet engine from Flyer, Fire Splitter. Uh, this was a new mod we have just added. And whilst generally I am against adding mods after a series has got underway, I think this addition is quite a nice one. It adds all sorts of nice things, including like rotors and small jet engines, different cockpits like the attack helicopter cockpit on the front of this vehicle, for instance, including other things that are really useful. Like uh, you'll see there's two tanks riding on the back of this vehicle here. They are actually just oxidizer tanks. That is to power the Werner engines, so I don't have to put rocket fuel on here. All I really needed to carry was the majority of liquid fuel with just these tiny oxidizer tanks. As we crest the hill we are starting to get close enough now to worry about the base defences. Uh, most people have set up their guard mode of 5 kilometers. though with our approach here I am well below the ground level for almost every line of sight attack. This is kind of my approach vector that I was going for, in fact this is exactly the approach vector I was going for. Uh, I also intend to hide behind the observation dome, the observatory even that is up there just to try and hold off the majority of the missile fire for as long as I can because obviously there is just one of me here and many of them up there. Now one of the problems I was having was that my target kept on changing and this was very vexing uh, mainly because I was trying to go for one particular vehicle in particular uh, and my, my target just kept on changing off it. I know this to be a feature of BD Armory, but uh, you know, it's really quite annoying when we've got everything clustered together like this. So if anybody can tell me how to turn that off, I think it's in the Alt-B menu somewhere, but I cannot actually find it. So yeah, if anyone knows the exact way of turning this off, please let me know in the comments because like, when I target something, I really want to st that to stay targeted, not target what BD Armory thinks is most in front of me. Right, so we're starting to close the distance now, and under two kilometers, I'm feeling that my missiles are most effective. All I have are Hellfire missiles, and they are labeled down as short range missiles and I'm going to take two miles of short range. Now I am most worried about this gun turret because that is the one with the goalkeeper on there and that is the only weapon that truly honestly scares me. 
direct hit in there. You can see we lost one missile to the cha to the uh, goalkeeper. That's fine. Now, I fired those missiles off in the hope that they were going to swing round and hit that gun turret. Also, if that failed, as it ended up doing so, it then gave me sort of a distraction value to get in there and have a go with my particular chain gun. Unfortunately, with this sort of jumping around targeting problem, I really had some serious issues. Even with it, I managed to get a couple of hits, but at this 500 meter mark, the goalkeeper, well, it just, no contest really. It, it completely blew me out of the water. But I think getting down to 500 meters was pretty good. Now having a look, you can see that I did score quite a few direct hits on this, um, which to me is, is a sign of victory. That, that went quite well. It could have gone a lot worse. But the thing that really annoyed me was that I didn't blow up the ve vehicle I was going for. In fact, somehow I seem to have only got the VTOL when that was the one that I was trying to target right there. And that is my problem. And I'm just going to talk for a couple more seconds so you can see this random explosion that I, I couldn't actually identify the source of. Being so close to victory, you can guarantee that no true-blooded patriot would let that stand. And Tam T. Kerman has volunteered her and the weird mongoose to take on this particular challenge. So she is going to take off from Black Crags, or at least take off from her grass uh, parking spot at the side of Black Crags, and start climbing up to about... 15, 16 kilometers so that we can make our way over towards Tape's base and try and finish off this bad boy. So here we are, mere minutes away from Tape's base. We are making our final attack run approach type style thing. We are six kilometers in the air, uh, about eight kilometers as the crow flies away from Tape's base. And as we are a weird mongoose, I think a bird's flight is the best way to measure our path. So this attack run is basically split into two sections. The first one is dodging missiles for long enough to be able to fire off these Maverick missiles. I'm going to launch those around four, maybe three kilometers, just to like give them like proper chance to, uh, to get going. And here come the missiles coming for us and oh i will take that one of tape's um vessels that are instantly exploded on its own that's fine i will definitely like take advantage of that which just leaves us with like the big scary one to take care of the uh, bd gun turret that is the one with the goalkeeper on and that is the one that i am most afraid of thankfully it seems to um prioritize taking out missiles over taking me out so sending my missiles away we can start firing at it with our chain gun and hopefully confuse it enough that it will just like well we'll just have that particular result there we've got double explosions everything is all good and now all we need to do is try and come in for a landing uh, the first thing i want to do is very gently come round make sure that nothing is actually firing at me anymore and i think we can actually assume that yes this is the case no longer is anything firing at me so we're going to kill our engines try and come down see if we can blow up a few things now you'll notice that i don't have my little green auto aiming targeting thing here this is because i'm trying to get rid of the um bd armory change your target whilst you're looking at it type thing the thing i was just complaining about with the dragonfly but the option that i thought it was turns out it really wasn't it was like the help you aim thing so that's no good so whilst i was making this turning uh, i managed to get into a pretty serious aerodynamic stall which was not the best way to come in for a landing but coming in for a landing it is so we're gonna have to take it coming down nice and hard at 20 meters per second thankfully the landing gear saved us ish if you take a backflip as being saved but there we go we are landed we are safe and that means we have something that we need to do here that thing of course is to wander out our victorious pilot tam t kerman plant down our flag officially claiming edith's side as our very own base Woo! so this is it tape this is the gauntlet laid down for you it was inevitable that it was going to be you that I came for because, you know, our bases are just too close together. Come at me, bruh. And with that, I am going to leave you with the footage of Tam T. Kerman trying desperately to get the winged mongoose back on its feet. And I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this conquesting adventure. I will see you next time where we're going to, I don't know, retaliate to whatever comes our way.